Today, I'm looking at the PowerTap PowerCal, a heart rate monitor which will attempt to report the power that you're doing. Okay, let's be clear right from the outset. This little thing here isn't a power meter, it's a power estimator. It is a heart rate monitor, so it comes in the standard heart rate monitor form factor, like this, but it has no direct force strain gauges on it or direct force power measurement in any other way other than your heart rate. So it takes your heart rate, applies a lot of smarts to it, and attempts to tell you what power that you're doing. First born back in 2011 or so, this is not a new unit, but it does pop up quite often on forums and as a solution for a particular use case. So what is this unit? Well, as I mentioned, it's a heart rate monitor. This thing transmits in both AMP Plus and Bluetooth. This is the dual version. You can get the Bluetooth only version. It sells for $69.99 US. The Bluetooth only version sells for $50 US. Looking at the data over the year with the NPE WASP of what this thing actually transmits, we can see here it transmits power and heart rate. Measuring heart rate is a simple and solved problem. These straps have done the job for years and years. It's how this little beast attempts to calculate power that's the interesting part. Early reviews of this unit have indicated there's a calibration process with the PowerCal. That's been done away with. PowerTap just weren't seeing the additional accuracy with that calibration process, so they've just gone with the stock standard out of the box. Should be good enough. So is it accurate? Is it even close? Well, as I sat down in this chair before, it told me I was doing 470 watts, so it's on shaky ground as it is. Let's jump over to DC Rainmaker's analysis tool and have a look at a Llama lab test and a two hour just riding along with a fair hard effort for the last 15 minutes in the hump day ride. Okay, the familiar Llama lab test with a 10 minute warm up, 20 minute steady state test, sprint at the end of that, some over and unders, and a little bit of fun at the end. Hmm. It's the blue line we're looking at for the power cow, if it wasn't obvious. What we're comparing it here to is the Ferrero Asioma Duos and the Tax Neo. So here, first 10 minute warm up. Oh, let's just write that off as the warm up. Okay, into the 20 minute steady state, into a sprint here. Hmm. The Neo and the Asiomas, eh, pretty much going hand in hand. That looks pretty good. The uh, power cow, uh, it's, it's kind of what I expected. Uh, accuracy wise, no. Um, effort wise, it indicates there's an effort occurring. Not really even steady state effort, it's sort of jumping up and down a little bit there. I step it up to 250 watts for the second 10 minutes. Uh, it steps up a little bit, becomes a little smoother. So within Zwift, your bike will be moving along on your head unit, it will be reporting a number. Um, it needs to be very, very smoothed out though, or else it'll be jumping all over the shop. Into the sprint there at the end, and it picked up the sprint probably 12 to 10 seconds later or so, and in no way matched the watts that I was putting out into the Neo, which was, uh, yeah, just touching on a thousand watts there, smoothed. Hmm. Now into the over and unders. Now what I expect here is that because it's based on heart rate, your heart rate will have lag. It takes a few seconds for your body to respond to the effort that you're doing, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. You can see the Asioma and the Neo pretty much hand in hand, and the power cow's like, yeah, me too. Me too, a little bit. Um, sort of a little bit after the fact there. So probably 10 to 15 seconds later, it was coming up and slowly dropping down, slowly dropping down. Indicating that I was doing an effort, but what effort I was actually doing really couldn't be measured that well with a power cow. Into a bit of a rant test here at the end and a bit of a sprint, it completely missed that altogether. So Llama Lab test wise, look, you can see there, especially at the end with a ramp up, if you're just riding along in Zwift and you just go a little harder, sure, your little guy or little girl on the screen is gonna go a little faster. Is it representative of the effort you're actually doing? Not really, not really. You will get moving though. Scrolling down to the mean max power over the longer time zones, so five minute power. Now this thing should start coming into its own with the longer steady state efforts. Wasn't really the case. About 50 watts out at the five minutes, 50 to 60 watts out at the 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a little, let's not even call that a little closer. Really wasn't quite in the ballpark. Down to the overall average stats from the Llama Lab test on the three power meters that I was using. Asioma and the Neo, pretty close, 177 versus 174, 149 for the power cal. Uh, max power, 1147, 1139, very close on those two, 892 on the power cal. Really wasn't quite there on that short, spiky effort. As mentioned, heart rate's a solved problem and pretty accurate as is, so 128's across the board. Actually, 128.7 is even better than that, so. But in summary, that's the worst Llama lab test I've ever done with a power meter, well, power calculator. Now, jumping over to another ride where I tested a few other things. This was a two hour ride on Zwift, one hour of just riding along, well, up a hill, then down a hill coasting, and then the Aussie hump day ride on the Wednesday night with the last 15 minutes going pretty hard. This was putting the power cal up against the Ferrero Asiomas. We can see here, look, it trends along with what I'm doing. That's probably the best way to say it. 
So you can see the ride here up the hill wasn't too bad. Well, in the way of it was responding when I was doing things on the pedals. So the blue line here is the Asioma Duo is reporting correct power, or most correct power. Purple line there was the power cal doing its thing, following along. Down the hill was an interesting one, I coasted. So what does the Asioma do when I'm coasting? Well, it doesn't report any power. What does the power cal do when I'm coasting? Well, it sort of drops off to next to nothing, but it would kind of spike every now and then. So it knows something's going on, it's different, but didn't quite nail the coasting part there. You can see when I'm just turning the pedals a little bit, it would then spike up and then drop down. So yeah, it wasn't really the healthiest going down a hill. However, when it came to the hump day ride, just moving along, just moving along there, that would allow me to stay in the bunch. That was okay. It wasn't responding snappily quick, but it, it kept me there into the 15 minute effort. This is quite interesting. It did register that I was going a lot harder than what I was previously. Let's dive in here and have a look. So you can see that it tracks not too bad. This is quite a smooth steady state effort. So 300 and what have we got here? It's 300 watts, near, near on 300 watts average. So even a little harder to make it look a little better there. For Vero ICM are reporting 311. The power cows reporting 249. But the trending there you can see is close-ish. It's close-ish based purely on heart rate, no strain gauges. So you can see there I took off a little bit, it pops up a little bit, it's kind of responsive within a few seconds. But where it really does let me down is the harder attack effort here. So on the pedal, 646 watts, the power cal's reporting 300, so half the effort that I'm doing there. And then the hard effort, hard effort, hard effort. And then the attack near the end there, it really didn't detect that much at all. Scrolling down to the mean max power on that two hour ride, comparing the power cal and the Favero Asiomis, you're looking at near on 93 watts difference over five minutes. Whew, that's a big gap. Near on the same for 10, 20 gets a little closer, half an hour you're still looking at uh, 214 watts on the power cal versus 266 watts on the pedals. A bit of difference there. So the summary there is it kind of works, but it's like finger painting with mittens on. It'll draw a picture, but it ain't gonna be pretty. Using things like workout mode, trying to hit particular power targets with something like this, it's just not gonna happen. It's not responsive enough, it's not accurate enough with the tracking, and it doesn't drop off soon enough. So you're gonna be punished even when you do back off the pedals. Not really possible for this. So sprinting's out, quick responsiveness is out, even long steady state efforts are gonna be hard with one of these in any kind of workout mode or pacing strategy with the numbers coming from this because it's just too wild, it goes up and down. You'll need to use a 30 second smoothing window with that little data value somewhere. Even then, you don't know really, it's just gonna to be too difficult to pace with one of these. However, there is a use case where this does come into its own and I won't give it the complete kiss of death. So the other day on Zwift, I jumped on and saw Scott Barger from Zwift HQ online. I thought he was on holidays, but I thought, oh look, I'll just jump on his wheel. We'll go for a bit of a ride together. Turns out he was in a hotel room using a power cal with his phone. So his Zwifting station was simply this and this and an exercise bike wherever he was off on holidays. He had to get his Zwift fix in, and it was possible for me to ride along with him. With Scott using one of these, I was able to stay on his wheel. We rode for about 10 kilometers together, had a bit of a chat, and we went on our own way. So that's the use case where this thing always comes up as a solution. The power cal in a hotel room in the hotel gym with no power pedals, no power meter, no technology. Simply one of these, and Zwift running on your phone, is good enough to get your Zwift on. And that can be just the incentive some people need to get the next level, get that extra couple of kilometers in, maybe even ride for the extra half an hour and uh, get the workout done for the day. So is the power cal a replacement for a traditional power meter? Absolutely not. Even PowerTap themselves make a number of other power meters well up the tree that run rings around this one. Would I recommend the power cal for someone who's just getting into power and learning how to train with power? Well, that's a no on that as well. It's just not responsive enough. You can't get that sprint data and you just can't get that level of accuracy you need to get your head around how you can train with power and become a better rider. Even a left-only direct force power meter will give you a lot more detail and a lot more accuracy than one of these. So there's my take on the power tap, power cal, power meter, power estimator. The worst performing power meter I've ever used in the Llama lab test. But having said that, I don't give it the complete kiss of death because of that use case of portability and price. Again, something you're not gonna be able to train with a lot or very accurately, but it still has that single use case if you're on holidays. And no, I didn't ride outside with this because the data that I was seeing even indoors, I'm not sure it's quite worth it. Maybe round two. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.